Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 80009, Pigsy's Food Truck on the LEGO Monkey Kid theme. This set contains 832 pieces, 5 minifigures, and retails for $69.99 in the US. This set was sent to me by the LEGO Group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. So here is Pigsy's Food Truck itself. I actually got this set because of you guys. I was looking to get more Monkey Kid sets because Land's been sending me like early copies of the newer waves, but I didn't have the first two waves. So I wanted to go back and get some of the earlier sets, and this one wasn't on my radar. Like, this just wasn't one I had a huge interest in. But I went on Twitter and asked you guys, hey, what are the best Monkey Kid sets from the first two waves that, like, I should definitely pick up? And, like, overwhelmingly, most people said this set, Pigsy's Food Truck, you need to get that one. So I was like, okay, a lot of people seem to like it, so yeah, sure, I'll get this one. I liked its presence in the Monkey Kid show enough that, like, I knew I would like having the set even if it wasn't that good. But having it in hand, yeah, I see why people like it so much. This is a really, really good set. The scale of this is really impressive. This is huge for just, like, a regular truck. Like, I don't know, a lot of times when LEGO does vehicles like this, they're a lot smaller to be, a, like, a little more in scale to the real world. Obviously, this is not in scale to the real world. It's way too big for the minifigures. But I don't mind that because it allows them to incorporate so much detail in here, and it looks really good. There's also just a lot of play features and whatnot. So, yeah, let's just take a look at all of it one by one. So, we'll start with the red bit out the front of the vehicle right here. This is actually a pitchfork weapon, which can be moved down like this. So one's moved out if you used to like take down any enemies in your way. And it just picks up the enemies and moves them along with it. It's like a simple play feature, but I think it fits the context of like what this is and the fact that Pixie's driving it. And it's just really fun too. Like that's a simple play feature, but it's really well done. I like that a lot. Moving back to the front of the truck though, you can see there's two headlights on the sides. There's like this hot dog hood ornament right here, which is really funny, but I love that. Behind like the pitchfork, there's a little stickered license plate piece. It might be a bit difficult to see, but I think I'm showing it right now. And it looks like the license plate is written using a combination of the Chinese and Latin alphabets. So it's cool to see that they use both here because a lot of the Monkey Kid sets mostly just use Chinese. Which is cool, like, I'm fine with that, but it's interesting to see them using, like, both here. Moving next to the actual hood of the car, you can see this little stickered piece with Pigsy's face on it. He's got, like, some pink fire behind him and then this, like, checkered pattern. And this hood can actually be removed as well. And underneath it, there's a little grill inside. And you can see there's actually two hot dogs on the grill. This is so funny. I know this set came out before, but I also reviewed Pigsy's Noodle Tank that came out in July of this year. And that did a lot of the same thing where it incorporated, like, a really cool-looking vehicle with just, like, different food things. And it's so cool to see, like, how those play features are integrated here. This doesn't take away from, like, the look of the build at all, but just adds so much personality. It's a fun play feature, and it's just really silly. Like, this is the kind of stuff I adore from LEGO, and I love how well done it is here. Like, genuinely, that's so awesome. And it's really easy just to attach the hood back on, like, nothing uh, all too intricate about that. Moving back, you can see there's two windshields on the vehicle, one in front of the driver's seat and one in front of the passenger seat. There's four more lights at the top, two big ones and two small ones. Mirrors around the side of the vehicle. On the side, you can see there's a little ladder for the characters to climb up to get in to the vehicle and then there's also a door that opens so that way they can actually like enter it the doors also have stickered parts with chinese characters on them as with all these monkey kid reviews like i can't read this but if anybody in the comments wants to translate that i would greatly appreciate it and that same stickers on both doors now you could open the doors and attempt to like move the minifigure in that way but it could be a bit difficult to put them in their seat so instead it may be easier to just take the top roof off the vehicle right here and that way you can get easy access to a pretty spacious interior you have two full minifigure seats so you could set like mk there and pigsy right here or if you have your own characters that you want to drive the vehicle you can have them do that instead the driver's side obviously has a steering wheel this can go up or down so if you want to adjust this to be lower for pigsy because he has shorter legs or higher up for like a taller character you can there's a little control stick in the middle and it's hard to get the camera at a good angle to showcase this but there's also a printed part in the middle it looks to be like a little radio with a dial and whatnot so i think it's cool that like even though you can hardly see that at all like the fact that that detail's there there's how pigsy and mk look like actually in the vehicle and of course you can close that back up with them in there and here's how it looks from the outside you can also peer into the windows to see them and then moving towards the back of the vehicle, at the top we have this large pig cannon right here. This is so, so silly, but I absolutely adore it. I love these little printed pieces for the pig's eyes. These are reused in a few different Monkey Kid sets, but they work so well here. The pig is gigantic. I love how round he is, too. And you can see a snout is actually a six-stud stud shooter, and you can rotate him 360 degrees so you can have him facing any direction you want. And then if there's a target in that direction, all you have to do is rotate this back part with this tail right here, and it'll shoot those studs out. And here's how that function looks from the front. He's got a little chef's hat on top, his ears can be moved up and down, they can be rotated left and right, and he's got these tiny little feet and this tiny little tail. I love this build so much, it's so much fun. They did a really, really nice job with it. Also on top of the truck, there's two wheels, a big one out the front and a small one out the back. And then moving down, the shaping on the entire like back bit of this build is really, really nice. I love how the round transitions into flat and it combines into that front part. Like, it looks like an actual truck. They capture the shape of, like, these vehicles in real life pretty well while also giving it a very, like, goofy and cartoonish look. A lot of vehicles with themes like Ninjago and 
whatnot tend to be unrealistic, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, the, that's what they're aiming to be. But this manages to keep, like, realistic proportions while also incorporating goofy stuff, and there's something about that I just really appreciate. And if, for whatever reason, you just want a large white truck and you didn't want, like, any of the pigsy detailing, this wouldn't be too hard to modify. Just don't put the stickers on, don't put the spikes on, don't put the pig on, and you'd have a pretty decent just white truck. And I just like that that option's there. The only part I don't like is this gappiness up here. That needs to be there so that way the doors can open. But I don't know, I wish there was a way to cover that up a little bit better, because that's, like, blatantly obvious and sort of takes away from the look of the build. As I mentioned, the outer side of the truck is covered in stickers, this one has the Pigsy's Noodles logo on it. There's some Chinese characters all throughout. As always, translate in the comments if you guys would like. Checkerboard pattern in the back, a little flame pattern right here. And I assume this is sort of advertising the types of food they serve. You can see there's noodles, there's a sausage, and there's like a little dumpling. And as I just showed, this whole thing can be moved up. This can be hinged 90 degrees like I showed right there. Or you can have a smoother transition where it stays sort of flat against the truck while also moving up. And you could do this on both sides. 90 degrees gives you like more access into the interior, but just moving it up like this looks a little bit nicer. But while we're here, let's take a look at this interior. First, there's a little door right here which opens, and I wouldn't have expected that to have like food or ingredients inside, but instead there's just weapons in there. There's like a chainsaw on the side and then a little gun right here. Really, really silly, but I always appreciate like sets coming with different ways to hold weapons. And these are just extra weapons for these characters because they do come with like their own accessories in this set. And it makes sense that this is like a combo of a food truck and a battle truck. So it makes sense that these would be here. Yeah, this is just really fun. I really like that. Next to that, we have like the classic Lego container pieces. These have been used as like mailboxes before. They were the old like gonk droid builds. And these can be opened up. I don't believe there's anything inside like by default, but you can store whatever you want in there. There's quite a bit of room. And then next to that is a little grill where like the food is prepared. You you can see there's like some grease or some cheese left over on it. Not very cleanly, I don't know if I want to eat from that grill. But you could put like MK or Pigsy back here to actually prepare the food. However, this doubles as like a mobile command base. So if you flip this gear right here, that'll flip over that. And then there's another door piece on the top right here, which you can pull down. And now suddenly you've got all these different radar scanners, all these different buttons. And like these are really up to your imagination what these are supposed to do. But this could be like what controls the turn on the vehicle, what controls the pitchfork out the front, or like what tracks down the enemies that they're fighting. And I think that's so cool that you could use this as just a regular food truck or you could transform into something like this with just like such a simple transformation. And then when you're ready to turn it back into a food truck, just push that off, turn that back like that. And now suddenly nobody knows that those are there. Coming over to the other side, this is like the side that's meant to be presented to the public. You can see you've got some food right here, two different sauces. Looks like ketchup and mustard in the back, some knives, a little golden frog, don't know what he's doing there. Some hot dogs at the top, you can see this is where the grill obviously is that we looked at before. There's a pan up here to be used. There's a little bowl off to the side over here, which you can see you can open up. And there's a little bit of food inside. Yeah, I think it's really cute how one side of the truck's about preparing food for customers, and the other side of the truck's about, like, a mobile command base to fight the enemy. And they're, like, distinctly split off, and only a part of it, like, actually transforms. It's really cool. It just makes for a very fun toy. I love it. And then we get to the back of the vehicle, and this is the one part of it where I'm like, eh, it doesn't look the best. Lots of exposed studs. You have the taillights right here. These spikes at the back, I just feel kind of pointless. They don't feel, like, as incorporated as the spikes at the front. License plate right here, same one as on the front, so you can read that a little bit better here. These plates right here feel really out of place. I'm not sure what they're doing there. I like the little air conditioning units out the back, but as a whole, I think the back on this thing is rather ugly. That's not a huge deal, because you don't have to look at it from the back, but I definitely think this part of the build could have been done better. And then finally, I think the only thing I haven't mentioned is the wheels. You can see there's little unicorn horns popping out of them. And that's just to match the whole, like, red spike aesthetic that the rest of the vehicle has going for it. But yeah, that's about all I have to say for the main build of Pigsy's food truck. So now let's move on to the side builds. Here are the only two real side builds. It's two motorcycles for the Demon Bull clones. And these are very simple. There's not too much going on. They just use Lego standard motorcycle build with some attachments. You can see there's, like, bull horns at the top and a big light out the front. And then there's a couple clips on the back. This one has two clips right here to hold weapons. And this one has a grappling hook, which can be attached with the clip. But you can remove that and have that like hang free. Yeah, I don't have too much more to say about these. They're rather simple, just like pretty generic Lego motorcycle builds. But I like that they're included. It gives you something for the bad guys. I like that you get two and not just one because a lot of sets like this will come with one motorcycle for one of the bad guys and the other one will just have to walk. So I think it's cool that you get two bad guys, you get two motorcycles. Just encourages like a lot more play. But yeah, I don't have much else to say other than they're good. I appreciate getting them. Oh, the set also comes with this little box which has a stickered piece with a picture of a peach on it. And if you open the box up, unsurprisingly, there's printed peach pieces in there. You get a total to them. These come in a few different Monkey Kid sets, but they're really good parts. I appreciate getting them here. So here are the first two minifigures in this set. We have MK in his, like, delivery worker uniform, and then we have Pigsy. This variant of Monkey Kid is one of the less common ones. I know he does come in a few other sets, but this is my personal first time getting him. And I actually really like this outfit for him. 
I like how disheveled it looks. I like the mess on his torso and whatnot, the little Pixies Noodle logo on there. His headband is unprinted in this variant, which is pretty cool. And then his face just looks so disheveled and concerned. It really fits his personality from the show. I think that's really good. And then his legs are dual molded than the same legs he has on his regular variant. I'm pretty sure like every Baron and Monkey Kid has had the same exact legs. They're really good. Like they're dual molded and they have side leg printing and whatnot. But I don't have too much else to say about them because they've come on many, many, many figures. In terms of accessories, he has a little cell phone. And then he also has this printed part right here. I'm not sure exactly what this is. This might be a menu for Pixies Noodles. But if you think it's something else, let me know in the comments. This does come in at least one other set too. I know it does come in the noodle tank from earlier this year. But I assume this part was originally introduced with this set. And that is a printed piece, not a stickered piece, which is really cool. Pigsy, I think this is the most accurate Pigsy minifigure we have. Like most of them aren't canon to the show, but I believe this one is. So that's really cool to see. You get an accurate version of Pigsy. He comes with his red pitchfork as he always does. And then he's got his molded pig face. I've said this before. I wish the Pigsy minifigures captured his personality from the show a little bit better because he just looks like a pig man here. You don't really get Pigsy's personality, especially because he doesn't have a mouth. He just has a snout on his minifigure. So that's a little disappointing to see. But the show aside, I do just really like Pigsy as a minifigure. And I think he's done fairly well just making like a Lego version of a pig man. I just think he could capture a show counterpart better or a show counterpart could capture his minifigure better. But the torso here is a step in the right direction and then he also has his mid legs, which are cool. There's the look of them with accessories removed. You can see Monkey Kid's full face print here. I love like the drop of sweat trickling down his face. And he just looks like really, really concerned here. And then around the back, they both have the Pigsy's Noodles logo, which is super cool. I love that like sense of consistency between them. And then MK's alternate face, you can see he seems pretty angry. MK comes in pretty much almost every set, so it's nice getting like at least a different variant of him here. And Pigsy in general is just a nice minifigure to get. And then here are the other three minifigures in the set. We have two Demon Bull clones, and then we just have a generic civilian. The Demon Bull clones are all right. They come in so, so many Monkey Kid sets, and personally, I'm not the biggest fan of their designs. They look fine. Their helmet's cool, and the torso is interesting enough, but the unprinted legs are pretty boring, and I don't like how they're all exactly the same. Obviously, I know they're supposed to be clones. They're all supposed to be exactly the same, but it's just not too fun to collect when they're all exactly identical, including, like, their printing and everything. Yeah, even just slight variants to make them slightly different would make them more interesting. So I'm not the biggest fan of these two here, but it is still nice to get them. If you're a fan of Monkey Kid, obviously you get two more Demon Bull clones here, and you can add them to your Demon Bull clone army if that's something you're building up. And then the civilian here, he's all right, nothing all too special. He's got a briefcase, which is a pretty cool part. The hot dog piece is always nice to get. And then the torso and hair and whatnot are pretty generic. I love this face print on him. This has been coming in city sets for a few years, but it's a really like useful part of him just like puffing up his cheeks, like about to throw up or something. It's just very expressive, very funny. I love that. In terms of weapons too, the Demon Bull clones both have different weapons. This guy has a little scythe or hammer right here, and this one just has a stud shooter. Here's what the Demon Bull clones look like with their helmet removed. It's just like a transparent orange head. I'm not going to take both of them apart because they're exactly identical, but everything you see here obviously is also on this guy. And there's the back torso prints in all three of them, as well as the alternate face for the civilian. Alternate face for this guy, not as interesting. I much prefer the other face, but it's cool to get two expressions, of course. And pretty nice back torso prints on the Demon Bull clones, honestly. I like them enough. So overall, I think all three of these are fine. Nothing too exciting or exceptional here. But for fans of Monkey Kid, like, you'll appreciate getting more Demon Bull clones. And there's some interesting parts in the generic civilian, even if he's not, like, that exciting. So, overall, would I recommend this set? I'd say I definitely would for Monkey Kid fans. Like, if you really like the show and you're looking to get into, like, buying the sets, this is a good one to pick up. It's a really, really well done build. It's a great value. And there's some fun minifigures in here. I do think it is missing a little bit in terms of the minifigure selection, because while the build is a great size for $70, only getting two, like, main characters and two just generic villains is kinda lame for $70. Another hero character, whether that had been May or Sandy or something, would have been nice. Or a more exciting villain in here as well, such as Red Sun or Lady Iron Fan. Like, that would have made the minifigure selection a little more justifiable. But the characters you get here are pretty lame for $70, so, like, if you can only get one Monkey Kid set and you, you're, like, trying to complete the cast as, like, easily as possible, I don't know if this is the set for you because this doesn't lead to you completing the cast in, like, an affordable way. But if you're more here for the build than for the minifigures, or you, like, already have the main cast and you're just looking to get other variants of minifigures, this is an excellent set. Great value, less than 10 cents per part. Really just fun and exciting build. I can imagine having a ton of fun with this when I was younger. I don't think I would have had this set because it's $70 is a bit out of my price range back then. But if somehow I did, I would have adored it. I think there's probably better $70 sets out there, but if you're interested in this theme and you like, like the idea of the set, I'd say pick it up. It's a really good one. And if somehow this ever goes on sale, like that would be the perfect time to get this set because on sale this is an excellent set. But as it stands, it's still pretty darn good. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please just like, subscribe if you're new. And you like videos like this every single day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.